Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The debate over U.S. foreign aid is a distraction. That's not to say that the amount of taxpayer money flowing to foreign countries in the form of military and economic assistance is insignificant. Even at less than 1% of the federal budget, the United States still spends more on foreign aid than any other nation. The latest foreign aid spending bill includes $95 billion for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Since World War II, the U.S. has given more foreign aid to Israel than any other country, $318 billion, with the bulk of those funds designated for Israel's military efforts. Even so, more than 150 countries around the world receive U.S. taxpayer-funded assistance. As Forbes reports, U.S. foreign aid dwarfs the federal fund spent by 48 out of 50 state governments annually. Only the state governments of California and New York spend more federal funds than what the U.S. sent abroad each year to foreign countries. Whether or not that some of that foreign aid is used for legitimate purposes, the global welfare system itself is riddled with corruption and waste. As Adam Andrzejewski rightly asks, do taxpayers instinctively know that they are funding choir directors in Turkmenistan, filmmakers in Peru, aid for poultry farmers Tanzania, and sex education workshops for prostitutes in Ethiopia? The problem is not so much that taxpayers are unaware of how their hard-earned dollars are being spent. Rather, we the people continue to be told that we have no say in the matter. We have no real say in how the government runs, or how our taxpayer funds are used, but that doesn't prevent the government from fleecing us at every turn, and forcing us to pay for endless wars that do more to fund the military-industrial complex than protect us, pork barrel projects that produce little to nothing, and a police state that serves only to imprison us within its walls. This financial tyranny persists whether it's a Democrat or Republican at the helm. At a time when the government is spending money it doesn't have on programs it can't afford, the national debt continues to grow, our infrastructure continues to deteriorate, and our borders continue to be breached. What is going on? The government of the people, by the people, for the people, has been overtaken by a shadow government, a corporatized militarized entrenched global bureaucracy that is fully operational and running the country. This powerful international cabal, made up of international government agencies and corporations, let's call it the global deep state, is just as real as the corporatized, militarized, industrialized American deep state, and it poses just as great a threat to our rights as individuals under the US Constitution, if not greater. Clearly, we have entered into a new world order. Fascism on a global scale. It remains unclear whether the American deep state, a national security apparatus that holds sway even over the elected leaders notionally in charge of it, answers to the global deep state, or whether the global deep state merely empowers the American deep state. However, there is no denying the extent to which they are intricately and symbiotically enmeshed and interlocked. Consider the extent to which our lives and liberties are impacted by this international convergence of governmental and profit-driven corporate interests in the surveillance state, the military-industrial complex, the private prison industry, the intelligence sector, the security sector, the technology sector, the telecommunication sector, the transportation sector, and in recent years, the pharmaceutical health sector. All of these sectors are dominated by megacorporations operating on a global scale and working through government channels to increase their profit margins. The profit-driven policies of these global corporate giants influence everything from legislative policies to economics to environmental issues to medical care. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. 
Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The pervasive influence of global surveillance, led by entities like the National Security Agency NSA, underscores a concerning erosion of privacy and constitutional boundaries. Operating hand-in-glove with corporate giants like AT&T, the government expands its surveillance apparatus exponentially, transcending legal and ethical constraints. AT&T's extensive telecommunication network serves as a conduit for mass surveillance, allowing the NSA unfettered access to vast troves of data. This symbiotic relationship, veiled in secrecy, blurs the lines between public and private sectors, perpetuating a cycle of governmental overreach and corporate complicity. The global reach of surveillance extends far beyond national borders, exemplified by initiatives like the 14 Eyes program, where allied nations collaborate to amass unprecedented levels of intelligence. However, surveillance represents merely the visible surface of broader global alliances, hinting at a deeper nexus of power and control that threatens individual liberties worldwide. The global arms industry thrives on war, with America as a major player, due to its vast military and close ties with international defense contractors. The military-industrial complex perpetuates perpetual warfare worldwide, with American troops stationed in over 70% of countries. Since 2001, over $1.8 trillion has been spent on wars in Afghanistan and Iraq alone, expected to reach $12 trillion by 2053. President Eisenhower's warnings about the dangerous nexus between the Pentagon and armaments industry ring true today, as America's military empire bleeds the country dry at over $15 billion monthly. Despite constituting only 5% of the world's population, the U.S. spends nearly 50% of the world's military budget, exceeding spending on health, education, welfare, and safety combined. The government's inefficiency and corruption, fueled by a greedy defense sector, have militarized the homeland, transforming it into a battleground. President Biden's expansion of the military empire caters to powerful interests, perpetuating a cycle of war profiteering and erosion of civil liberties. Global policing is evident in the uniformity of militarized tactics among police forces worldwide. The exchange program between American police and allies like Israel underscores this phenomenon, with American law enforcement learning from agencies accustomed to military rule, rather than civil law. Programs like the Strong Cities Network further solidify this global approach by training local police to combat extremism and intolerance. However, the concern arises regarding the potential labeling of lawful activities as extremist. Government agencies, supported by fusion centers and advanced technology, aim to identify and deter potential extremists, blurring the line between preventive measures and ideological policing. With surveillance, facial recognition, and predictive policing techniques employed, this pre-crime strategy raises ethical questions about individual freedoms and the extent of governmental control. As global initiatives expand, the implications for civil liberties become increasingly profound, signaling a shift towards preemptive ideological enforcement. Are you starting to get the picture now? The government and its global partners have struck a deal that puts the American people on the losing end of the bargain. On almost every front, whether it's the war on drugs, or the sale of weapons, or regulating immigration, or establishing prisons, or advancing technology, or fighting a pandemic, if there is a profit to be made and power to be amassed, our freedoms are being eroded, while the global deep state becomes more entrenched. We've been losing our freedom so incrementally for so long, sold to us in the name of national security and global peace, maintained by way of martial law disguised as law and order, and enforced by a standing army of militarized police and a political elite determined to maintain their powers at all costs, that it's hard to pinpoint exactly when it all started going downhill. But we're certainly on that downward slope now, and things are moving fast. Given the dramatic expansion, globalization and merger of governmental and corporate powers, we're not going to recognize this country 20 years from now. 
Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.